Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit st statisticsfromaz.com. This video is the second in a playlist on regression. That playlist includes two videos on correlation because correlation is a prerequisite for linear regression. There will be five videos on regression itself. After that, one video on residuals, which is part of the post-regression analysis. And finally, we'll include in this playlist my already uploaded popular video called ANOVA versus Regression. That video compares and contrasts the two concepts in order to enhance your understanding of both. And eventually, I plan to do a three-video playlist on design of experiments, which is a discipline used to validate or invalidate regression models. See statistics from a to z.com slash videos for the latest status of my videos completed and planned. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll go quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, to give you the overall picture on one page. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are five KTUs. The first key to understanding tells us to always plot the data first, because statistics alone can be misleading. The second KTU says, the correlation coefficient r is a measure of correlation. It is the standardization or normalization of the covariance. The third key says, the correlation coefficient r ranges from negative 1 to plus 1. r equals 0 indicates no correlation. r equals negative 1 or r equals plus 1 indicate a perfect negative or a perfect positive correlation, respectively. But perfection almost never happens, and there are different opinions on where to define the threshold values of R for strong or weak correlation. The fourth key says, correlation is not causation. The fifth and final key to understanding says, establishing correlation is a prerequisite for linear regression. And here, on one page, are the five keys to understanding the concept of correlation part two, the correlation coefficient. You may wish to pause the video at this point and read them all together. Okay, let's begin our detailed look into each key. We learned in the part one video that correlation is observed when two variables either increase together or decrease together in a roughly linear pattern. If the two variables are correlated, the data should at least roughly cluster around an imaginary slanted line. The left and right diagrams here illustrate correlation, and the middle shows no correlation. Okay, what are the first three laws of statistics? Well, the first law is plot the data. And some experts phrase it as draw a picture. And what is the second law? The second law is plot the data. And the third law, you get the idea. Plotting the data is important. This leads to our first key to understanding. KTU number one says, always plot the data first. Statistics alone can be misleading. For correlation, use a scatter plot like these. The correlation coefficient r is a statistic calculated from sample values. The calculated value for r is almost identical for these two scatter plots. The two values both indicate a strong linear correlation. Now that makes sense for the one on the left. However, the one on the right is not linear at all. That data would be better approximated by a polynomial curve in regression analysis. Since correlation analysis is only about linear relationships, if the two variables are correlated, the data should be the data should at least roughly cluster about an imaginary slanted line throughout its entire range. That's important, throughout its entire range. 
If you don't see that clustering about the slanted line in the plot, it would be unwise to proceed with calculating a correlation coefficient. Now why a slanted line? Well, a horizontal or vertical line would mean that one variable can increase or decrease while the other stays the same. That would mean no correlation. You note that in the diagram on the right, the first two-thirds or so of the data points follow an upward slanting line, roughly. But the dots in the rest of its range most definitely do not. In part one, we learned that covariance has some serious shortcomings. It is in meaningless units, like kilogram meters. As a result, it is not useful as a measure of the strength of the relationship between the variables. It can only tell us the direction, negative, zero, or positive. The covariance is in units, which are the product of the units of x and the unit of y. Now, to get rid of the meaningless xy units, we can divide covariance by something which has those same units. This would give us a unitless number. So we divide r by the product of the standard deviations of x and y, that is the product of s sub x and s sub y, as shown here. Now, r is also known as Pearson's r. And there are other alternatives for the correlation coefficient, but this is the most widely used. In the part one article, we showed that the value, the value of covariance is different for different units of measure. The standardization or normalization that we described above eliminates this shortcoming. There are no units of measure, there is just a value for r. And the correlation coefficient r tells us both the direction and the strength of the correlation. Key number three tells us that the correlation coefficient r ranges from negative one to plus one. r equals zero indicates no correlation. r equals negative one indicates a perfect negative correlation, and r equals plus one indicates a perfect positive correlation. But perfection almost never happens, and there are different opinions on where to set the thresholds for strong or weak correlation. In the social sciences, the phenomena being analyzed are not as precisely governed by the laws of science as are engineering and scientific phenomena or processes. So the clip levels in the social sciences tend to be less rigorous. A social scientist might say that r equals 0.7 or higher indicates a very strong evidence of correlation, but an engineer might require a minimum of 0.81 or even higher to include that the correlation was very high. The part, in the part one video, we said that if x and y are correlated, that doesn't mean that y is a function of x. That is, it doesn't mean that an increase in x causes an increase in y. It could be the opposite. It could be that x is a function of y, or it could be that both are a function of some other unknown variable, or it could be neither of those two options. The net is that correlation does not imply cause and effect. It does not imply causation. However, correlation is a prerequisite for developing a linear regression model which can describe causation. If the correlation coefficient shows a correlation, the next step is to get out of statistics and into the real world. Interview some people who have expertise on how the variables interact in the real world. Can they tell us how a plausible real-world mechanism might behave in order to give us the data that we have? If so, we can then build a regression model which can be validated by designed experiments. Only then would we have strong evidence for causation. KTU number five states that establishing correlation is a prerequisite for linear regression. Now this compare and contrast table may help your understanding of both concepts, correlation and linear regression. Correlation analysis describes the present or a past situation. It uses sample data to infer a property of the source, population, or process. There is no looking into the future. The purpose of linear, linear regression, on the other hand, is to define a model, a linear equation, which can be used to predict the results of designed experiments and then the real world. Correlation mainly uses the correlation coefficient r. Regression also uses r, but employs a variety of other statistics. Correlation analysis and linear regression both attempt to discern 
whether two variables vary in sync. Linear correlation is limited to two variables, which can be plotted on a two-dimensional xy graph. Linear regression can go to three or more variables or dimensions. In correlation, we ask to what degree the plotted data forms a shape that seems to follow an imaginary line that would go through it, but we don't try to specify that line. In linear regression, that line is the whole point. We calculate a best fit line through the data, y equals a plus bx. Correlation analysis does not attempt to identify a cause-effect relationship. Regression does. Okay, that concludes our clarification of part two of the concept of correlation. If you like this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. Now I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsomatoz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromazcom slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.